So this is the center of the city. Look at the lovely purple flowers. Those are the jacaranda flowers blooming now. And then if you look straight down on your left, you will see the harbor where we left from. Your ship is there. Maybe you can see a little piece of it. No, it's a little more on the right, but that's where we are coming from. So what I'm saying is the harbor is very near the center of the city. It's like a 10 minutes walk. And uh, this is the most elegant part of the main street and the city. Look on your left, you will see a pedestrian crossing. And here is where people promenade in the day, but especially in the evening, in the night. And uh, when they get hungry, they will stop and have some of the specialities of the city. It could be silvery or pastry. Pastry, we have the best pastry. The um, cannoli cassata, which are filled with ricotta cheese, or the almond cakes, and so many different ones. And if you talk about savory, we have the panelle, which are made from chickpeas flour. And you have the arancine, which are the rice balls with grown meat inside or you can get them with um, um, cooked ham and mozzarella cheese and um, we have the pizzas and so many other nice specialties now if you look on your right you will see the gorgeous opera house this is one of the highlights of the city was built in 1897, inaugurated. The author were the Basile, the father first and then the son. We cannot go straight on the main street, that's the Maqueda street that begins, but we will go on it further ahead where I want to show you the ex um, center of the city. That used to be the center first, the famous Quattro Canti. And then when the city grew in the northern part towards where we are coming from, it changed the center. So it moved from the Quattro Cante to the center where we just passed. The sea is behind those buildings there, just a few steps from here. But we will go on the parallel street to the main street. We will make a right turn on the Roma Street. The Roma Street was opened at the end of the 1800 and the first part of the 1900. You will see some lovely buildings starting the one in front of us. <coughs> we have the beginning of a whole row of buildings in the Liberty style, the Art Nouveau style. <coughs> Here it is on the left and then the second and the third and go straight on. right we have the main post office it's what we call the Mussolini style because it's very imposing very severe and was built in 1936 and then coming up on the left behind the palm trees we have the beautiful um, church of San Domenico in the Baroque style and uh, we have uh, um, many illustrious people buried inside this church. The Judge Falcone is buried here so this is one of the places where so many people will come today to pay homage to him. The judge I told you about that we are commemorating today.
the end of the Roma Street is the main railroad station. One can go by train to different parts of Sicily and then you cross the Strait of Messina and go to Calabria by train. You put the train on the ferry boat. <coughs> the buses cross on the ferry as well and the cars and it takes 20 minutes and then from Calabria they go up towards wherever they are going. Rome, Milan, Naples, all over. Now we leave Roma Street and we go on the Victorio Emanuele Street. This is the oldest street in the city. When the Phoenicians came, they landed here, not down there on your left where we have the sea, but the sea came away up here. They found a little peninsula that went from here to where you see the gate called Porta Nuova. And this little territory was in between two rivers, the Kimoni and the Papireta rivers. And so they found that the city up there where you see the gate. And for many years, this was the city until it was enlarged during the Arab period, we will be talking about the history afterwards and you will see of the different people that came and ruled the island. Um, huh? <laughs> Giancarlo is showing you his skill. Bravo. I didn't thought you would go through there. <laughs> Okay, folks, this is the famous Quattro Canti. This used to be the center of the city, but not any longer. The center is over on the right now, away down there where we come from, okay? Down there. And when they opened the street that we are on, the Makeda Street, by crossing over the Vittorio Emanuele Street, divided the city of Palermo into four quarters. Each facade is richly decorated in the Baroque style. In front of us now is the city hall, and look on your left. That's the Pretoria Square and Fountain, but people call it the Fountain of Shame, and the Square of Shame because of the naked statues on the square. When they were laying this out at the end of the 1600s, 16th century, end of the 1500, everyone was scandalized because of the naked statues on the public square. And they said, que vergogna, what a shame. And this name stuck. This, the cloistered nuns of the convent, that red building in front of us there, they were so scandalized that they came out by night and seen by the people with clubs and hammers they said, what are the protruding part of the male figures? They broke them off. So long before Lorraine did, Lorraine Bobbitt did what she did, we had the cloistered nuns of the convent of La Martorana that mutilated all the male figures on that screen. They are still mutilated. This really happened eh? in the 17th century. And then, look there now, on your left, the Bellini Square, because of the Bellini Theater in the background, and two churches built in the 12th century by the Normans. The little one with three domes is called San Cataldo. It looks more like a mosque than a church, because when the Normans, who were Vikings, came and settled in the southern part of Italy and conquered this the um, island from the Arab Muslims who were here for two centuries and a half before them, the Normans were very tolerant with them and used their handiwork. So we have the continuation of the Arab style under the Norman rule. We will talk more about this later because we are going to visit the two beautiful cathedrals which are from the period. In fact, they are in the Arab Norman style, 
meaning that they were built by the Normans with the handiwork of the Arab Muslims. We used to have a Jewish synagogue here on the left where you see this Baroque church. The Jewish people lived in Sicily way back, some say, from the Roman time. Unfortunately, in 1492, they were being chased out by the Spaniards. And so, they have traced the places where they lived along with the Muslims in the same quarter. And the names of the streets are written in three languages. In Italian, in Arabic, and in the Jewish language the Hebrew language. On the right, I can see that the door, the gate is open. You will look in, you will see the beautiful inner courtyard coming up. The building is called the Comitini building. unloading or loading I don't know well these are the streets that were open in the 17th century you see so look look at the beautiful inner court you will see another one if the gate is open on the left this is Palazzo Santelia Trigona each of these lovely buildings belong to one family Today they are used for cultural events. Look now on your left, look at the lovely inner courtyard. We um, have different exhibits and even music in the courtyard sometimes, in the summertime, yes, very often. We have turned up the air, okay? Okay. Coming up on the right is one of the open air markets where you will see them selling fruit, vegetables, meat, fish, and a lot of things. We live mainly off agriculture in Sicily. Everything that you will see on the market has been produced here on the island except for bananas and pineapples. the long zucchini, the long squash. They are very tasty. A mild taste, not a strong one. And look at the fresh onion in front of us.
whispers are still on are you still turned on okay please turn them off i forgot i thought um the young man had done that you press the red button and uh, keep it for a few seconds and the light will go off you turn them off i will ask you to turn them on again before we reach Montreal. okay so now ladies and gentlemen we will see the ex royal palace coming up on the right you see that building over there that's the highest part of this territory coming up from the sea it's only 47 meters high and that's where the Phoenicians founded the city on the same side is where the Arabs when they ruled the Sicily for two centuries and a half they built the palace of the Emir and then later on when the Normans came they built their residence there and then all the different groups of people that came and ruled Sicily we are going to talk about the history within a few minutes they settled on the same site and they modified the buildings many times depending on the who was ruling and the style that was in. The building um, is the seat of the Sicilian parliament since 1947 and no one lives there. We have a beautiful chapel in there also, the Palatine Chapel, built by the first king of Sicily, Roger II, the Norman king. And it's the chapel that inspired the beautiful mosaics we are going to visit in the Cathedral of Monreale. On the right is the University Campus. It's a very large university. We have around 40,000 students enrolled. And um, we have most of the departments here, but we have some on other parts of the city. Sicily, because of its position in the Mediterranean between the east and the west, have been ruled by so many different groups of people from time to time because of its strategic position. And who ruled the island could dominate the whole Mediterranean basin. The first groups that we know about from the prehistoric time are three groups, the Sicani, the Elimi, and the Siculi. And uh, we don't know too much about them, but we know that they had a very high progress because they left us a lot of graffiti and paintings in some caves all over the island, different parts of the island, and even up on Monte Pellegrino, where we have graffiti from the Paleolithic period. And then the groups that we know about in history are the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians came from where Lebanon is today. They were great navigators. They touched different parts of the Mediterranean because of commercial reasons. They founded the city of Palermo, and then after them, the Carthaginians came. The Carthaginians came from Carthage, a city on the northern coast of Africa that was founded by the Carthaginians in 814 BC. And then the Greeks came. They settled on the eastern part of Sicily and founded those beautiful cities that we still have today, such as Syracuse, Catania, and then in the southern part, Gela, Agrigento, Messina, Imera, so many in the hinterland as well. Each colony founded sub-colonies as well. And then later on, the Romans came and conquered both from the Carthaginians and the Greeks. I would like to show you this lovely view around. You can see the mountain chain that surrounds the city of Palermo. 
goes all around from your left to the right from the right to the left the town of monreale is on the slope of monte caputo in front of us now on one of the mountains that form part of the mountain chain the greeks had a very high development yes in the 5th century BC, they had reached their highest development and had already built um, many theaters and temples until now they have discovered the 10 theaters from Iran. Yes, the Romans, they ruled from the 4th century BC until the 5th century AD when the Byzantines came. The Byzantine remained here for three centuries until the Arabs came in 827. It took them 70 long years to conquer the island from the Byzantines, who were the Romans of the Orient, and they remained in Sicily for two centuries and a half. It was a good period for Sicily. They brought the capital city to Palermo and beautified it. They built many mosques, many castles, they took good care of the land, introducing many plants such as cotton, sugarcane, rice, carob, artichoke, mulberry because they needed the leaves to feed the silkworm. They brought in the silk industry and uh, later on they still flourished under the Normans where they made everything at the court of the Norman kings in Palermo that they needed at the court all the nice silk robes and objects uh, and there were also the goldsmiths and the silversmiths who made everything that was needed at the Norman court and um, 